Hi, this is Ricky Smith. I want to talk to you today about everything you wanted to know about the Certified Maintenance Reliability Technician Exam, but was afraid to ask. And the CMRT does complement the CMRP, so the technicians of this is the test. The benefits of, of the CMRT certification improves visibility and recognition within your organization differentiated pay scale some I mean there's some places once you get that CMRT you get you get an increase in pay don't don't take that for granted okay don't take that to your managers okay <laughs> assist in job promotion absolutely greater job effectiveness I mean you feel pride in what you're doing improve the ability to to differentiate between candidates in the hiring and promotion process if you're standing in line for a job and you've got a CMRT, you know, and, and the person next to you does not, they they will look at you first. They may not hire you first, but they'll look at you first over anybody else. It proves, improves confidence in one's ability to perform maintenance work. This is the exam. So attributes of a proactive maintenance technician ensures all maintenance work is executed to specification. Perform preventive maintenance as a controlled experiment. They always seek to advance their knowledge their technical knowledge through on-site, off-site, and vendor training. If a patch is required, you know, on a rest job, or emergency job, they always write a corrective work order so that so the equipment can be restored to specification at a later date. Next, they arrive, always arrives at work 100% on time. These are proactive maintenance technicians. If they observed equipment not performing the specifications or an operator having problems, they notify their supervisor of the problem immediately. So with a certified maintenance and reliability technician, this is the student guide. So you can Google the CMRT candidate guide and you can download it off the website or you can go to my website. And this is where I got just not the free download on CMRT, but the documents that you need to study for the CMRT also. So some example questions, the best way I've seen, I want you to answer these. OK, I want you to write down the answers. Best way to assure that a full face respirator has a positive seal is to place the palms of your hands over the discharge and inhale, over the inlet and inhale, on the front and press toward your face, or up and down, uh, oh, excuse me, on the bottom and push up, sorry. According to the industry standards at which the minimum working height should be, would be an individual to be required to wear a safety harness, three feet, four feet, five feet, or six feet. All right, write down the answer. Number three, in OSHA regulations, the term point of operation protection refers to what feature in maintenance? To what feature in maintenance? Lockout, tagout, machine guarding, personal protective equipment, or pre-operational inspection? All right, write them down. Here are the answers. I hope you did good, okay? Check it out for now. So eligibility, for the Certified Maintenance and Reliability Technician Certification. There's no educational experience or other requirements other than completion of the application form. Payment of the applicable fees in advance and time since taking a, a previous certification exam for candidates who wish to take an exam examination. No conviction of felony or other crimes of moral ter turpitude or under international, national, federal, or state law in, a, in any matter related to the practice or, of or qualification for professional activity. The allotted time for CMRT, you got 175 multiple choice questions with four possible answers, just like I showed you, and only one correct answer. Examinees have three hours to complete the closed book exam. No ref, reference materials will be allowed in the exam room during the exam. And really, you. The way CMRT works now and CMRP, you don't have to be in the exam room. What you'll do is you'll go to a test center and you'll take it there, but you can't bring reference material with you. Online calculator, calculators are available to examinees to assist with calculations. You have to ask for them. External calculator, calculators are not allowed. Why? Because people could put information on it that may help them pass the exam. Subject areas addressed for the CMRT exam. You know, domain one, maintenance practices. So task one, these are things you have to think in your mind. How do I apply it in my organization? 
So task one, here to safety, health, environmental standards and policies by taking personal responsibility in order to prevent injury or illness from exposure to hazards. The candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following. Bloodborne pathogens, what are they? Confined space entry, electrical safety, emergency response and evacuation, environmental compliance, ergonomics, eye protection, fall protection, fire safety, HASCOM and, and MSDS, hearing conference, conservation, ladder safety, lockout, tagout procedures, and personal protective equipment, and process safety management. So see things like process safety management. So yeah, I know what that is. We you met, need to make sure you understand the definition of it and how it's used, why it's used. That's the kind of things you're going to see on the, all of these, that's what you ought to look at. Respiratory protection, rigging, safety system and devices, scaffolding. So my domain one, again, maintenance practices continue. Task two, inform production control personnel about the maintenance activity required in accordance with the company protocol call in order to adjust the operation schedules. The candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following. Lockout, tagout procedures, the process, process overview, work permits. Task three, perform the proper lockout tagout on equipment in accordance with applicable standards in order to ensure zero state energy prior to commencing maintenance work and minimizing and minimize health, safety, and environmental hazards to employees and the community. The candidate must demonstrate the following knowledge, lockout tagout procedures multiple energy sources, zero, zero energy states. Domain two, preventive and predictive maintenance. You know, task one is perform preventive or, or predictive maintenance according to the work plan in order to maximize mean time between failures. The candidate must demonstrate the following knowledge. Company safety, health, and environmental policies, equipment function and use, predictive maintenance procedures, Preventive maintenance procedures, work plan requirements. Task two, apply predictive maintenance techniques by observing equipment performance and collecting ongoing performance data in order to maximize mean time between failures. So the candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following. Company safety, health, and environmental policies. The function of the equipment. Operation parameters for equipment, including baseline, conditions. Predictive maintenance techniques and technologies like oil sampling, vibration readings, thermographic equipment, and ultrasound testing, ultrasonic testing. Task three, lubricate equipment in accordance with the lubrication schedule and equipment specifications in order to ensure reliable performance and prevent damage. The, the candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following. Company safety, health, and environmental policies. If you have them in your plant, that's how you, when you want to relate to these questions, these, these statements here, say, okay, how, do, how does our company use safety? What's the company's safety, health, and environmental policies where I work? And you're probably gonna, gonna have a good chance of passing that question or questions in this area. Equipment specifications, filtering systems, lubrication specifications, and then lubricating systems, and then lubrication principles, and lubrication route. So continue on with preventive and predictive maintenance. Perform alignment checks on rotating equipment. This is pumps, fans, blowers, turbine, gearboxes, compressors, in accordance with equipment specifications in order to ensure reliable performance and prevent damage. So the candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following. Company safety, health, and environmental policies. Equipment alignment techniques. Laser, reverse dial, straight edge, rim and face. Equipment functions. Thermal growth. What is thermal growth? Operating principles. Operation principles for rotating equipment, perform checks on safety equipment and devices in accord with a equipment design specifications in order to ensure reliable operation and protect employees. So continue on domain two again, task five, perform checks on safety systems and devices in accordance with equipment design specifications in order to ensure 
reliable operation to protect employees. The, camp, the candidates must demonstrate knowledge in the following company safety, health, and environmental policies, consequence of bypassing safety systems, equipment design specifications, equipment functions, limit switches, photoelectric lines, etc. Operation of safety system. Then domain three. Troubleshooting and analysis, gather, gather information related. So this task one is gather information relating to a work request by reviewing the work order or interviewing operations personnel in order to determine the general nature of the problem. The candidate must demonstrate the following, effective interpersonal relations. How do you work well with others? Equipment and or processes. Maintenance work order system. Task two, verify the problem is valid. You know, if you have a problem by systematically testing or observing equipment performance as conditions permit, and then in order to determine if a problem actually exists, the candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following, function and use of the equipment. What is the function and use of the equipment? Think about your equipment. Process indicators, gauges, you know, you've got human machine interface and so on. Task three, Attain appropriate technical documentation using facility resources in order to gain full understanding of design, operating parameters, and or sequences. The candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following. Facility resources like the CMMS, your technical library, or engineering files, operating parameters and sequences. Technical documentation could be schematics, PNID, blueprints, o &M manuals, SOP, MSDS. Task four, investigate previous maintenance activities as conditions require by reviewing, reviewing equipment history in order to identify information that will facilitate troubleshooting. The candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following. Facility maintenance records. Facility preventive maintenance scheduling programs or system. Preventative maintenance techniques and theories, lubrication, seals and bearings, alignment, Task five, identify the cause of the problem using a systematic process of elimination in order to determine what is causing the malfunction. The candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following, equipment and or process parameters. Hazards involved with operating or maintaining specific process equipment and systematic troubleshooting and analysis. Domain four, corrective maintenance, verify troubleshooting analysis for disassembly and inspecting components using established procedures in accordance with applicable standards and guidelines to confirm that the identified corrective action is appropriate. The candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following. Common mechanical system, lubrication, seals, bearings, alignment, power transmission, cams, cranks, hydraulics, thermodynamic, heat transfer, piping systems, steam systems. Even if you don't have them, you need to understand them for this test. All right. Correct use of tools and equipment, including measuring devices, equipment specifications, equipment and component functions, operation of equipment and components, results of troubleshooting analysis, and specific equipment, specific equipment repair procedures, applicable standards and guidelines. And we continue on corrective maintenance task two, repair the function of Repair the malfunction by performing required corrective maintenance tasks in accordance with best maintenance practices in order to return the equipment to the desired operating condition. The candidate must, ha must have demonstrate knowledge in the following. Common mechanical system, lubrication, seals and bearings, alignment, power transmission, cams, cranks, pneumatics, hydraulics, thermodynamics, heat transfer, piping systems, fabrication, steam systems, correct use of tools and equipment, including measuring devices, equipment specifications, equipment and component functions. You know, what is the, what is the component functions of a pump? So one of the functions of a pump is to rotate. The other may be to, to provide pressure, you know, fluid. Then we got the fans, turbines, gearboxes, and so on. Equipment and component operation. Specific equipment repair procedures, applicable standards and guidelines. We continue on task three, monitor the equipment after it's been repaired while operating at under conditions. 
in order to determine whether or not the repair was successful. The candidate must demonstrate knowledge in the following. Equipment component functions, pumps, fans, blowers, turbines, gearboxes, compressors, and so on. Equipment and, not, and component operation. Task four, release repaired equipment for return to service using standard operating procedures in order to resume normal operation. The candidate must demonstrate the following. Procedures for releasing equipment for return to service. So requirements for recertification. So now you're certified requirements for recertification. Certificates must, must, re, must meet recertification requirements during the current three-year certification cycle to retain certified status for each sequence three-year cycle. So this requires ongoing personnel and professional development in these areas in areas of maintenance profession. So in other words, you, what you got to do is you got to have to take tech classes and so on. And there's a lot of webinars, free webinars out there. That's all you got to do it, or go to classes, you know, wherever that is. The process is also designed to facilitate and recognize the contribution to the profession. Recertification candidates must strictly comply with all requirements contained in the recertification. You'll learn this when you take the class. Individuals can recertify under, can recertify under the recertification program, which requires 50 recertification credits. One hour is one credit from a combination of two or more activities. So it's gotta be two or more. Okay, option one could be continuing professional education in areas relevant to the four domains of the exam, actual hours spent in the classroom are counted. Complete educational workshops or seminars I mentioned earlier relevant to the subject area in the body of knowledge used to develop this exam. Actual hours spent in the workshop, you know, or seminar. Option three, participate as an active member of SMRP or SMRCO board or, or committee, actual hours spent in such a meeting. Like one of the things I'm doing now is I help write the exams for the CMRT. I've been doing this for a long time, you know, so that adds to mine for the CMRT, but also my CMRP. Option four, 10 annual executive chapter meetings at organizations relevant to the subject of the body of knowledge used to develop this exam. And that goes with a lot of organizations. So the actual hours spent in such activities. Attend a conference relevant to the subject areas in the body of knowledge to develop it, you know, the exam. You know, actual hours spent in conference sessions up to six hours for each day of attendance. Study material for it is the CMRT Candidate Guide. I'd recommend you download it. You can go to my website and download it or you can just Google it. You know, this is one of my I've got is day in the life of a proactive maintenance technician. My, my book, Industrial Machinery Repair, I've written a lot of questions out of this book. Best maintenance technician practices, you know, the three-day workshops that are out there for it. I have them, but I do them basically, most of the time it's just private. And then, so in this best, best maintenance technician practices, a lot of hands-on exercise, a lot of hands-on. So my recommendations to study, join SMRP and become a member. Study using the material recommended from the previous slides. Go to world class maintenance forward slash CMRT dash study dash recommendation and download the documents and study for the exam. Study one hour a day, four days a week. Do not purchase a CMRT study material or practice test from the internet. Okay. Don't do that. When you're ready to go to the exam, when you're ready for an exam, you go to, to person Pearson view dot com forward slash smrp and register all right so questions comments you could send me an email rsmith worldclassmaintenance.org thank you for your time and i hope i wish you the best i hope you pass the exam thank you goodbye